Good morning. Good morning. Just as a point of information, uh, Dr. Atherton is assisting over at Lutheran High, so he has a class this morning, so it's going to be us for a while, I think. So yep. let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord of grace and mercy, teach us by your Holy Spirit to follow the example of your Son in true humility, that we may withstand the temptations of the devil and with pure hearts and minds avoid ungodly pride. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost is from Proverbs chapter 25. It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. Take away the dross from the silver, and the smith has material for a vessel. Take away the wicked from the presence of the king, and his throne will be established in righteousness. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, Come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. What your eyes have seen do not hastily bring into court. For what will you do in the end when your neighbor puts you to shame? Argue your case with your neighbor himself, and do not reveal another secret, lest he who hears you bring shame upon you, and your ill repute have no end. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the epistle is from Hebrews chapter 13. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember those who are in prison, as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you also are in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all, let, let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and, and adulterous. Keep your life free from the love of money. Be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke you, to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teachings, for it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods, which have benefited those devoted to them. We have an altar from which those who serve the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, then, let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of the lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the gospel reading for Sunday is from Luke 14, 1 to 14. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. And behold, there was a man before him who had dropsy. And Jesus responded to the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. Then he took him and healed him and sent him away. And he said to them, Which of you, having a son or an ox that has fallen into a well on a Sabbath day, will not immediately pull him out? And they could not reply to these things. Now he told them a parable. He took now he told a parable to those who were invited, when he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, When you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, give your place to this person, and then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. He also... He said also to the man who had invited him, When you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. 
But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind. You will be blessed because they cannot repay you. You will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I'm going to look at this gospel reading in terms of a culture. Cultures are groups of people who have a, a common set of beliefs and values. And today we hear some aspects of the uplifting culture of the kingdom of God from Jesus, right? If you think about um, his culture or the culture of the kingdom of God, it's about healing, humility, and it's about hospitality to those who can't repay you or to a gracious hospitality. Now, this is in direct conflict with the Pharisees, the lawyers and Pharisees we hear about in the text. Theirs is a cancel culture. Because look what they're doing with Jesus in that, that first part. So they're watching him carefully. Why are they watching him carefully? They want to find a gotcha moment. And they see the man who has dropsy, which, by the way, in our day and age, I think... Um, we refer to that as edema. It's a, um, because edema is when you, you have uh, fluid buildup and, and then it, it causes your skin to break and so forth. And one who had dropsy was considered unclean. So they're watching Jesus to see if he's going to heal this guy because it's the Sabbath. And oh no, no healing on the Sabbath for, for them. And they want to they get him so they can, you know, uh, well... Um, distort his credibility or take away his credibility with others. But then Jesus um, says, uh, talks about uh, uh, whether it's, you know, good to heal on the Sabbath. Um, if you think about that in terms of, uh, he says, well, look, if your son fell in a well or your ox, wouldn't you, wouldn't you lift it out, right? He knew they were thinking about this and how to get them or to get at him. So he, um, he heals this man and then talks about that and they don't answer because their only concern is one thing, getting rid of Jesus. Now, um, later on we hear what Jesus says about the Sabbath, right? Man was not made for the Sabbath, but the, the Sabbath was made for man. And it was made for us to receive the benefits of his kingdom, the healing balm of forgiveness, life and peace that he gives to us, right? When we come to church, by the way, we are entering this culture of, of healing, humility, and hospitality. That's what the kingdom of God is all about. Jesus is here serving us. He comes with healing. Now, that second part of the text is about humility. These guys really think highly of themselves. They go to the best spots, and Jesus warns them about that, right? He said, don't take the best spot because you'll be humiliated by, in the end um, because you know, the host will come in uh, with someone else and, and you'll have to move and go to a lower place. Go to the lowest place first and, and let the host take you to a higher place. And if you think about what Jesus has done, right? Uh, and then, by the way, he, he goes on to say, he who humbles himself will be exalted and he who exalts himself will be humbled. Think about Jesus who humbled himself, taking on our flesh and blood um, and then suffering and dying uh, on, on the cross. Uh, uh, nothing more humble than that. But then he rises from the dead and he's, he's exalted to the highest place, right? So that at the name of Jesus, every knee bows, both in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue will ultimately confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of, of, of God the Father. Notice what Jesus does for us. He comes humbly among us um, and he is lifted up and he comes now by a spirit at work through his word to to give us a higher place, not to make us just better people, but to give us his righteousness, his goodness, his, his, the, the, to make us the human beings that we were created and redeemed to be. And finally, um, that last part uh, is about hospitality, um, throwing a dinner or a banquet, not for your friends or your rich neighbors who can pay you back, but precisely for those who cannot pay you back. Our Lord throws every week a big feast right? To us who cannot and will never be able to pay him back. It's all by grace. 
It's we are undeserving of these gifts, but he, he graciously comes among us to, to give us these gifts. This culture of the kingdom of God is, is glorious. It's uh, when we, we enter into this culture by en entering into the church, when you come on Sunday, it's counterculture to the, the culture of death, the death of, that, that is out there in the world. It, it gives you, uh, in this culture, receive the life of Jesus, the goodness of Jesus and, and his peace that surpasses all understanding. So that's kind of where I'm going. I know that I, I kind of took each little part. Yeah, but I, don't know if I like it. I, you, one of the things you're doing about the culture bit, and I, I think, you know, the old Adam, we like to exalt ourselves and make ourselves look good all the time. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we hear a lot about pride these mm -hmm. days, Pride Month. And, yeah. And uh, just this exaltation of the self. And I couldn't help but think of um, John the Baptist when yeah. we were talking. You know, John the Baptist was pointing to Jesus and people wanted to exalt him. Mm -hmm. And his words were so uh, pointed. Um, I must decrease, he must increase. Mm -hmm. And then I th think of another one, um, Mary, when she came and broke that alabaster flask mm -hmm. on Jesus. And they all said, you're, you're spending all of this on this heretic, essentially. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus exalts her. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so, I, again, the other thing I was thinking about, too, is the, the first thing we do when we come into the presence of the king in church is uh, we don't beat ourselves like that, but we actually pull out the kneelers and we kneel. And we say those words of confession, Almighty God, Merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner. And that's the exact opposite of the culture out there, which takes sin and turns it into pride. And notice how the lowest place, okay, I mean, we, we, get, we get low. And, and we're taking the lowest place. We understand who we are as sinners. And, and that, that's important because then we will look up to receive the forgiveness from the host mm -hmm. at the meal, right? right. Who, who says, friend, come higher. Come, come into the kingdom of heaven. The he heaven opens through the forgiveness of sin. Right? That's what it's really. And he insane. invites the children all the time too. I mean, oh, yeah. which that society would. Be. Yeah, no, no, get that. Yeah. Get rid of them. And then yeah. he says, "Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God." Of, of such is the kingdom. Yeah. It's right. The the, the uh, lowest, the lowest of the low. Yeah. There's so much here. Yeah. Um, good stuff. Good stuff. So the hymn that you're going to yeah. look at is the hymn. Uh, uh, I, yeah, I think really unpacks it is 620. It's one of our communion hymns. And, um, and it's right during the feast where we mm -hmm. undeserving people, um, uh, in fact, the only worthy ones in receiving the Lord's Supper, the undeserving, yeah. right? It's, it's those who confess their sin and want, what, want more Jesus. And um, like he came uh, into the world, he comes among us now to bring healing. Let's do verses one, four, and six. Okay. Jesus comes today with healing, knocking at my door, appealing, offering pardon, grace, and peace. He himself makes preparation, and I hear his invitation, come and taste the blessed feast. God descends with heavenly power, gives himself to me this hour, in this ordinary sign. On my tongue his pledge receiving, I accept his grace believing, that I taste his love divine. Now have I found consolation, comfort in my tribulation, all to heal the troubled soul. God, my shield from every terror, cleanses me from sin and error, makes my wounded spirit whole. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas.